Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to a very special episode of Physio TV on the road less traveled. As you all know, the road less traveled is about special people who have done extremely good in their professional domains or their personal domains, and they have been successful in what they do. When we talk from academic institutes, we all these days are supposed to go for the NAC accreditation as per our university guidelines. All other colleges are trying their best to pursue these efforts. There are very few under, especially our university, who have undergone their NAC domain. We are extremely privileged to have with us a visionary, a person who thought about looking at this process of NAC, not just from the accreditation point of view, but from ensuring that the entire system and the entire process works in a very, very good way. When we all were very well struggling with managing our institutes, he was the one who actually thought about getting the system worked out in a very good way. We are extremely privileged and we are extremely proud to have with us our favorite and beloved Dr. Sham Ganvir sir. Dr. Ganvir sir has done his master's in physiotherapy and he is also a PhD holder. Sir is currently the professor and principal of DVVPF's College of Physiotherapy at Ahmednagar. Sir has been an ex senate and also a board of studies and academic member of MUHS Nasik. Sir is a PhD guide. He is a board of studies member of DY Patil College of Physiotherapy, Pune, and also of KLE Academy of Higher Education at Belgaum. Sir is also an executive committee member of our Maharashtra State Occupational Therapy and Physiotherapy Council. So, what is very special about Sir is his aspect of thinking of what can be done for professional enhancement and institutional enhancement. So with extreme pride and privilege, we welcome you, sir, to this very good episode of Physio TV. Thank you so much for my kind introduction. Sir, Thank you, sir. Thank you. And first and foremost, on behalf of all the viewers of physiotherapy, all the institutes, I would like to heartily congratulate you and your entire team for getting an A accreditation in NAC. As we all know, it's a Thank very you so much. Thank you, sir. It's a very huge challenge and everybody of us is struggling. So let me just ask you a few of your questions, sir. How was your entire experience going through the NAC evaluation? Uh, it's really a very good question. Uh, now, the when you're talking about the experience about the NAC evaluation, so each and every person has to get uh, something to know about the NAC, first of all. So my experience was a little bit, uh, uh, the movement was some up and down, uh, but then each movement, it made me very stronger as an, a team leader and as a person. But overall, it was very enriching and incredibly uh, uh, learning throughout the uh, process of this uh, uh, NAC evaluation. So personally, uh, I feel it was very uh, improvement uh, experience I have seen throughout the evaluation. Well, that, that's really great, sir. So I just wanted to have this uh, it was always in their mind. How did this process start? Because when I, I understand university has given a statement quite late and we are still, there are many deemed universities who are still, who have gone through this process. How did you think, how, what came to your mind to start this preparation? How did you really start this process? Yes. Uh, as in preparation, <clears throat> when we talk about the preparation, how do we start? Uh, in 2015, already uh, when we received the result of our first second cycle of NAC, uh, first cycle of the NAC, uh, it was in 2015. Immediately, I started working on the second cycle of the NAC. My motto was very simple. It is simple is like that to gain a maximum score in each criteria. And as a leader, I always see my team, each member has some different qualities. And I choose that quality and I allot them the work. And I try to get the work done from those team members. And uh, I keep them guiding uh, uh, throughout the uh, process. So accordingly, the, each team member was trained in specific criteria. And complete guidance was given to them throughout the process. That's, that's great, sir. You are actually, what you are demonstrating is a characteristic of a very true leader 
who has actually led his team to a very good process so uh, as you said you started your first cycle in 2015 when many of us were not even prepared for this so how, what compelled you to go for nac accreditation yeah yes it's very right uh, it is uh, out of box out of uh, syllabus we can say uh, because routinely uh, we always work on the lic we work on and then uh, last from last two years we work on the impact assessment and all but uh, when i was uh, working as a lecturer uh, at uh, saungi dattamike it uh, i, I uh, the our vice chancellor was there i don't know he picked me from the that uh, our uh, team and uh, he has given the responsibility of the uh, nac uh, uh, coordinator for the department of physiotherapy so i could understand it important in shaping personally and then shaping the institute and the professional grow also but later on after that i was not that much con converse with all those uh, nac domains but later on in 2011 12 uh, i went to uh, bangalore for some multidisciplinary conference and uh, i attend one that in, in that conference i saw that uh, dr ganesh higren now he's no more here Uh, he has presented a, a, a topic on the quality assurance, and I was very much impressed by his topic. So I personally met him, and I asked him about all those things. And uh, that time, then we had our good terms with him, and then uh, 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 he he gave me some opportunity to visit some institute, and then uh, uh, I visited, and then I got some uh, peer team member selected from the NAC Council. and then uh, it started visiting some institute and at the time of visit i saw that uh, what are the things they are showing me during the visit of peer team visit actually this is called peer team visit only it's not an inspection nac so at the time of visit i saw that some of the most of the things that we are also doing in our institute uh, but the thing is that we are not compiling properly or we are not documenting properly or we are not able to do such type of presentation and all so i thought and then after the those visit after one or two visit i uh, come back to my institute and and immediately decided to go for the uh, nac process and of course not without the consent of the management uh, i am very grateful uh, the, that our management is uh, very supportive in all those things and i there was a governing body meeting was there with the management and in that uh, governing body meeting the foundation colleges were there all the colleges like institute of uh, nursing medical physiotherapy and engineering mb everywhere and in that uh, governing body meeting you have to give some presentation about our uh, institute and the future plan was the one of the domain so in that future plan i told them that uh, i i i am uh, like i want to go for the nac assessment so everyone was just saying to me uh, he, uh, they were saying uh, how it's possible for the nac and uh, that day that day i decided no anyway i will go for the nac and uh, so this make me to compel to go for the nac accreditation wow so that's that's really encouraging that your entire journey process your thought process was not like an immediate domain it's a, uh, a hard effort a, a vision what you have been going through since the past more than 7 years i would say right so i and what i really appreciated about you right now is many of us see things but we do not get involved what you found an opportunity you got involved with that opportunity and i think it's really a very great thing to know so you are mentioning about how you are doing a lot of process and documentation and we all know that you know nac also asks us about a lot of documentation so what is the importance of this documentation in our domains because we know as uh, times we all are very lazy about paperwork and documentation so what is the importance of this documentation yes uh if you see the nac nac is all about learning to understand the importance of documentation many things we do routinely but we fail to document and hence it through its presence so documentation make us to realize our strength our weakness and it help to work upon them also however it should be a very continuous process so most of the time we are lacking in doing uh, uh, in doing the documentation so documentation in that way is very important and it is a continuous process that each and everything should be well documented great great so as as we rightly said that most as i was saying most of us are a bit i mean lazy on doing our paperwork so yes we should learn that 
keeping records and documentation. In fact, uh, very late we came to know about the geotag photographs. So right. I think even that's a part of documentation. So yeah, that's that's really great. So so I just wanted to know how do you plan? How did you actually plan the collaboration and funding also? Because many of the times we have these challenges uh, about going through different collaborative and funding domains. How how did you work on towards them? Yes, it's a very good question. Actually, uh, when we talk about the collaboration and funding agencies, funding uh, research, that time only we feel that we have collaboration kahan se karenge, kahan se leke aayenge. We always feel that. But uh, I grabbed every opportunity. Uh, for example, you can say that uh, when the MHS has started the short term research grant. And I know that in short term research grant, maximum students were used to participate from the Sanchit Institute. And uh, if I'm not wrong, in 2015, our institute was the first institute to receive that grant. So yes. I took, took that, that uh, uh, domain into my funding research, though it is a small amount, but this is a funding type of program. Next, if you're not getting the funds from the government or funds from the MHS, why not to generate the funding from the self department, from the self from the management also from the institute? That can be also a domain which can be added for the funding uh, research domains. As you said, the collaboration. Collaboration is also the term we say this very vague, like you need to do the collaboration with the uh, academic collaborations, research collaborations, then the uh, you talk about the uh, 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 collaboration for the patient services. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it was very eventually that uh, during one of the Scientifica uh, workshop of ICF, which was organized by your institute, the resource person was Dr. Alaknanda Banerjee, madam. Yes. Sir. And we were really impressed. And even she was impressed by our work. She visited to our institute uh, 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 for some work. And when she visited, she saw a lot of work that we were doing with uh, uh, active aging programs and all like that. that. And she was impressed and she has given a small proposal for us because she's running some uh, Dharma Foundation of India for the uh, elderly people. Right. And then uh, how we tie up with her and then we have the functional MOU and the collaboration uh, with her. So this is how uh, we should try to generate a small, small thing. Uh, everything uh, is not in our hand, but then through our uh, good terms, through our good uh, knowledge, we can try to grab the small things from us. And slowly when I... Uh, uh, talk about this collaboration to our management and all. So they also try to insist to get some collaboration through their sources. And then they got the Asian uh, Network uh, Korea collaboration, where yeah. all the, our foundation has been involved there. So this is how we started with the collaboration and the funding uh, 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 agencies for the research and all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You know, whenever we have our concepts or discussions, we generally talk of, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. But very nicely you actually explain small things and small steps which actually work towards larger success I, this is this is really very exciting for all of us thank you so much sir for highlighting on this particular domain you when you're talking of uh, i always know you talk of uh, the strength of your college and you say that your students your staff and your students are the strength of your college uh, i wanted to know what is the role of the alumni and the students or other stakeholders in this process how did you involve your alumni or your other stakeholders like the parents or the industries in this particular process? Yes. Now in our institute, uh, we used to get the feedback. We have some feedback mechanism and feedback mechanism in overall. If you talk about the patient, if you talk about the alumni, if you talk about the students, stakeholders, every day. But this should, feedback should be very honest. Today, I, I, many times I told to my student also, if I'm wrong, if you're not able to come and tell me directly that you are wrong, feedback mechanism is there. And we got the teachers feedback, student feedback. So we need an honest feedback. And that for getting this honest feedback, I used to take them lecture also. You should be very honest. You are not able to, you are not supposed to mention your name. So don't worry. Because this feedback is being helpful by providing the constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. through feedback and this process which gives me direction for the improvement you will uh, you, you will uh, not believe that even we are getting the when see no one is perfect and sometimes we get some bad feedback uh, you can have some bad feedback some poor feedback from the sub about the staff my staff are also ready for that improvement so this is what we want and constructive criticism through this feedback and we should take in a positive way and in that way our alumni our students and stakeholder has been very helpful for us 
So what I really like about this is the way you're mentioning about being open to suggestions and viewpoints of what people, because yeah, uh, I would like to say for everybody that most of us are scared to listen to negative things about us. We want to hear, hear appreciation, but we are scared when somebody wants to criticize because we don't even want to accept that, you know, we are poor in something. So this is something very beautiful that you said that listening to what people think about us in an honest manner, which is more important rather than, you know, getting a flattery of what you are doing. That is very, very important. And more important I like is about the attitude that, as you said, we should be receptive rather than being defensive. So that's something very, very important. Thank you so much sir, for getting this point. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know that you are belonging to an institute currently, which is a huge establishment. It's as a medical college, dental college. Your earlier colleges, when you mentioned about Savangi, also had a medical college. H how does it help or what are the advantages of having an attached medical college from a NAC perspective or for institutes like many of us who are standalone physiotherapy institutes? Can that be a challenge for us or it really doesn't matter? What, what do you feel? Yes. Uh, answer to your first question, uh, attached to medical college, absolutely, uh, I believe, yes, we are in advantage if you are having the uh, medical college. Now, I keep on telling, uh, in even in the uh, uh, MSR, uh, our MSR, what we have prepared, in that also, I told that there should be an attached medical college. So what is the advantage of that? Mm -hmm. If you see the whole of our syllabus, first year, second year, third and final year, what is happening? The 10 subjects are with us, remaining are with the medical institute. So what is the, what we are getting, we are here, we are getting the breathing time by distribution of the burden of the administration of the other subject, wherein standalone college, they have to take those burden also on them, preparing the internal assessment marks of that subject, medicine subject, uh, surgery subject, because I don't think that uh, the medical staff, uh, the, those who are having the standalone college, those staff will do all those things. So that burden is overburdened by the standalone college. Similarly, the infrastructure, which we required for the uh, NAC assessment and all, standalone college, it will be a little bit tough. It will be a little bit. I'm not saying it is not possible. It will be a little bit tough because as the 10 subjects are our physiotherapy subject, but remaining are the medical subject, they also like to visit anatomy department. They also like to visit biochemistry department. They'll, they'll, they also want to know the teaching plan of the medicine department, how they are running, how our students are sitting, what are the infrastructure they have provided. So this part will be uh, missing from the standalone college. So in that way, attached medical college, we have that much of breathing time and get help to concentrate on our departmental subject more than the medical subject. That's, that's really nice to hear. Uh, yes, I understand that standalone institutes will have a challenge, but I'm also thankful that we have people like you who have always been guiding us, who have been giving us the help and the inputs. And I think you have been very unselfish when it comes to giving. I think you have been mentoring a lot of colleges under MUHS. I recently saw a video that you made on the new software that our university has done on li uh, the library. And it was such a wonderful thing that someone who is taking an active initi initiation for getting this work done. And that's really appreciable. And that's the reason why we always, you know, are your fans because you are the person who takes a step further and says that, yes, I want to do this. So again, I would like to acknowledge that you have been helping us also as far as our process are concerned, mentoring and guiding as you have been doing for many other institutes. So that's really great. Uh, so before I go to my next question, I want to share a small uh, few uh, memories, I would say that uh, we have so kindly love me a minute for the same so these are some of the beautiful memories i hope you can see them they have been some of the beautiful memories that i am sharing on the screen where you have been a part of the peer team committee you have been working on various domains uh, visiting different different institutes getting acknowledgement recently we saw a appreciation letter to you by our honorable vice chancellor of our own university and it makes us feel proud of the work that you have been doing 
the friends that you are making the effect that you are creating on our profession and professional enhancement so these are some beautiful memories some appreciations that you have got some hard work and hard efforts that you have taken up for everybody and i think very rightly deserved by everyone thank you so much so i guess we can just go on and on and on on this and uh, it's really great to know this so i think i'll just have this on the screen because this is something which has motivated me a lot looking at the way you have been appreciated in uh, the whole of the crowd uh so coming to my next question for you uh see as as we saw in the pictures you have been an evaluator for the nac also you have been uh going to various colleges and institutes you have been working as a part of the peer team and the peer committee how has this experience helped you shape your own institute it's a very good question uh really uh it helped uh, me to think from the evaluator point of view so when i started uh, visiting to these uh, various college various institute uh, uh mostly i visited to the universities where the um, a lot of colleges are there like uh, medical the nursing yoga college many colleges are there and few of them i visited uh, with the physiotherapy institute also so now i knew what evaluator expect from us and i prepared my whole team in that way also and i started documenting accordingly and i am very lucky that whatever i told to my uh, that team and all they are also uh, very eager to know how to prepare a document and now today they started to prepare the document also and that helps me a lot as an evaluator a very small example i will tell you that uh, we are documenting the things but now here presentation of documentation is also very important a simple word like if you take the paper and if you want to do so they will just do the punching and they will put it inside i i used to teach them no like that you have to fold like this and you have to put the punching like this and then there has to be proper hole and then it should be very uniform see these are the very small things i know that we 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 actually try to ignore all those things but these are the steps to learn because i also learn from somebody else exactly. so this is why i used to teach them and really the my staffs my team they are also eager to know all those things and today they are very much happy ke sir hum kahi par bhi jaate hain hum log do logo ke samne khade rehte hain to hame thoda proud feel hota hai ki mujhe ye aata hai wo aata hai so that is what uh, this experience helped me lot and in development of my institute and development uh, of my uh, team also great so sir i know you since years of our association that i have always appreciated you as a perfectionist what i am happy is you are not just perfectionist yourself but you are inculcating this amongst your entire team and i think that's what makes your institute so perfect so i really really admire this so i just wanted to ask out of curiosity what should we aim at when we go for next should we aim for a c or b or directly go for an a oh it's very a uh, tough question for me but uh, as an uh, uh, my profession i would like to tell you that you should not aim for any grade okay you should not aim for any grade aim for the quality improvement and nac is very vast it demands lot much more than teaching and learning if you see the criteria teaching and learning has got the highest score but it demands lo a lot more than teaching and learning so providing the facilities under each criteria is very difficult for us very difficult so uh, what i feel that uh, the management should understand our problem and they should encourage uh, us understanding by providing the supporting staff because see this is very personal i am telling you that uh, you you cannot say to any staff like ye karke abhi kabhi dena chahiye bossing cannot be done i learn lot because you have to take in that way also because they are our colleagues they are our such. so for that we need a very supporting staff non teaching staff who are expert in all those things that is what we required and we are just asking the staff which is given in our our policies in our criteria in our uh, minimum standard requirement msr so if you talk about for 15 intake we need some eight uh, supporting staff if that supporting staffs are very uh, uh, keen in doing the works and very experts so i think uh, if you have problem lot other problem will get solved so supporting staff 
uh, has to be provided by the management. That is what I feel. We are there for teaching learning, but other demands, a lot of things that is required from the supporting staff. So I feel that you should not aim for great, but you should always aim for the quality improvement. That is what I learned because we got first cycle, uh, the grade was low, then we got a second cycle, the grade was higher. So we learn for the quality improvement. Very, very that well said, sir. Very well said. Uh, I really like this, that don't just look at what you are going to achieve. Improvise your quality and as I said, said that uh, success ke piche mat bhago. Right. So success to apne aap aajayegi if you look at the quality and the standards. So very, very rightly said by you. And I really liked that you are appreciating your team for uh, all the credit. So I just want to say, we always say to, team is together, everyone achieves more. So what is your uh, take on uh, team and role of the team? So very rightly you said that uh, if you talk about the importance of teamwork, the success cannot achieved by uh, without team. I cannot say that what uh, today I am standing that is because of me only. Mm -hmm. I always say this is a teamwork, and you require. So what is what I am doing here? I am telling you, I identify the potential, the interest, the capacity of each team member. See, there are there are many staffs are there. So I know that one staff is very good in taking the lecture. But the same staff is not able to do the documentation. I saw that one staff is very good doing in the extension activity, but is not able to take proper lecture. So we have to identify, and all are good. All, everyone is having the good, good quality. So it is a duty of a leader to identify the potential, interest, capacity of each team member, allow them work, give them time, and the work should be always a time bounded. You cannot say that I have done my work, so I will give three days. No. I used to maintain the diary with the staff member. I will give the work, I will sign on that work, and when you have to return me back, I will sign on that also. So I distribute in that way, and I was lucky enough that my staff never said no to me for any task till today. Till today. And uh, uh, and they're always eager to learn something new and to give 100%. That is why in that way, I'm very lucky. So it is, we have to just find out their potential interest and their capacity in what work they can do. And we should be time bounded always. That is most important. Right. So, so as we always say that the five fingers are not the same, but together we make a fist. So similarly, right. all our staff are having their own qualities and their own domains and they work together. So just general, the fear amongst everybody is that once we take up something like a knack, we should forget holidays, we should forget Sundays, we should forget days and nights and we just, and that is, I think, something that we all are scared about that now we have to just keep on working day and night. Is it really true that you just have to you know, forget living your life and knack is everything? Uh, to a certain extent, uh, I believe. But more important is that to avoid the spillage of the work and keep time bound work and the monitor the timeline. Now, uh, we have seen the most of the time that uh, uh, the, there are some staff, those who are coming like visiting staffs are there. Mm -hmm. And they, they feel that uh, they are visiting, they will not do this work, they will not do this. I got only time limit of this and this. It is everywhere. I'm not talking about uh, any colleges. I'm just talking about general. If 14 staffs are there out of that, five staffs are coming just for taking the lectures. And they said, this is not my job. This is not my job. I, I want to do only this. So in that way, the management has to support us here. They, how the work should be divided equally to each other. If the work has been divided equally and the time bounded is given to everyone, I think uh, there will be no need to forget your holiday and the home. You will you have to work in your proper time. You come at 9 o'clock and you go at 5 o'clock. Your work will be done everywhere. But where in these holidays and the homes we have to forget where the work is more and staffs are less and the staffs are not efficient to do those work there will be a problem but then solution is there with the management okay so as as you said one is management support which is immensely important and second thing is the commitment from the staff which yes. is equally important uh thank you so much sir for this uh sir when you have always been saying that students are also a very important part of uh, this NAC process and uh, we should not just focus on only the learning part, but then a lot of importance is given on value building and extracurricular domains. So what is your opinion on how this would help our students grow better, value building and extracurricular domains? This is very right. Uh, 
in to, uh, today's era of uh, you see that there's a constant uh, updation and information which is necessary for each and every student to develop uh, all three domains that is a cognitive domain uh, psychological domain and affective domain so extension activities are challenges for all of us to develop this domain what happened exactly when the students from uh, go into the clinics from second year to third year and final year and internship they always work in the protected area uh, under the supervision of the teacher and all but now the student they uh, we are see we are, our generation is very far like now today's generation they want to earn money in, in short cut period actually uh, we never thought about that in during our internship period we will start to open our clinic also we thought about doing some education and all but today's generation is very fast so specifically uh, when they are applying some uh, approaches uh, in the treating the patient in the protected area that makes it totally different but if they are going to the outside in the uh, where they have to face some challenges in the way of communications in the way of their talking how to treat the patient independently so for that i think uh, uh, they should uh, have the extension activities are very much needed to understand their potential of each students how they manage the patient independently and how they treat the patient independently so in that way uh, the extension activity is very much needed okay uh, thank you so much sir well, so many a times when we are taking these sessions or like uh, when we are trying to work on the back domains we at times feel that we are not giving that amount of time to our students so maybe you know because the time requirements and everything is there so i just wanted to know how did your students react to this or how were they a part of this particular thing what was their thought process i mean I, I know i'm asking a lot of questions together so no, no, no. how did they want to move towards this process? no you're very right very right see student are the heart of our institute ये एक सिंपल चीज है ट्रेन अगर खाली हो तो पैसेंजर अगर नहीं हो तो ट्रेन तो खाली हो जाती है और उसको इनकम नहीं होता है दैट इज वेरी डेफिनेटली द सेम थिंग हियर वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द मनी हियर बट स्टूडेंट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द हार्ट ऑफ आवर इंस्टीट्यूट इन माय इंस्टीट्यूट आई इन्वॉल्व द स्टूडेंट्स बट इनडायरेक्टली ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट सबमिशन ऑफ आवर एस एस आर प्रिपेरेशन दैट वॉज इन कोविड टू i did not allow the student to stay in the campus and that time students were not there but their feedback which was taken routinely that help us to improvise our weakness so they they are involved they are not like that they are not involved they are involved in doing the documents they are involved in doing some uh, feedback mechanism they are involved in doing some filing works they have to learn that also documentation is very important so in that way not directly but uh, indirectly they were involved all, in all this process okay so uh, so as you said that when we talk of a team it's not just we it's not just the teachers it's the non teaching staff the residents the students and everybody who is actually an important part of this particular process so yes thank you so much i think we should also be training our students to be more better uh, just a couple of more questions uh, now your institute has certain geographical location also and every institute would have certain domains like this or uh, do you think that there is a uh, it would matter as far as the location of the institute is concerned like an urban institute or rural institute or has a campus or no then does all these things matter as far as nat mm. accreditation is concerned also yeah, absolutely i agree with this because i have visited a lot of institute and i can make the difference when i visit in the different uh, institute when i visit to the university i saw the lot of the campus was very big the way they have uh, welcome us in that way and seeing the amenities uh, in the campus the facilities in the campus it gives the first impression for the uh, uh, evaluators when you are visiting to the next so it really matters but now what is there now the technologies has uh, advanced technologies are there so urban and rural uh, it does not matter mm -hmm. but still rural will have an upper hand in the area of uh, ample uh, uh, areas and material clinical materials and the amenities which you can show but no campus and campus definitely it matter yes if you see the criteria 6 and 7 definitely you will be land up with zero mark if no campuses which mainly focus on the campus amenities facilities and may take away your many points from those uh, criteria thank you thank you so much sir so when most of us are just thinking whether we should go for the nac process when we are apprehensive about these domains 
you have given us wonderful insights to a lot of process i'm very sure this entire discussion can go on there's a lot to learn from you there's a lot to take a guidance from you but uh, we all have certain time limitations and yes that's the re uh, reason why we need to have this one last question rather it's not a question i would uh, what would be your advice to all our viewers especially the faculties and the management who are now thinking about you know taking up this nat process this i can just advise you as an principal viewers you should understand the potential of the team member and allot them the work as per their capacity as a viewer as a faculties they should respect the deadlines which is given by the leader which is given by the principal they should do their work with the time bounded and they should respect the work and they should work as a team they should work as an uh, institute they are doing for the institute not for uh, their own as a management unconditional support should be provided as a man unconditional support should be provided and when we are jumping into the swimming pool we will definitely we will learn the swimming and will come out it will take time it will it is a learning process so management unconditional support has to be given by the management that is what i want to tell you here thank you thank you so much sir it's really been a lot of help even uh, i'll just like to tell the audience of yours also i was also taking down notes when sir was saying there was there's so much that i got to know today and i'm very sure all our viewers are going to get a lot to learn as i said earlier sham sir is always helpful and willing to help everybody and we really appreciate you sir for accepting our invitation to come to physio uh, tv give your insights your view points share your secrets tell or uh, let us know how uh, you know we should work and everything so once again thank you for sparing your valuable time being with us and making us all you know nac ready so thank you so much for your kind uh, uh, cooperation sir thank you so much thank you for giving me the opportunity Uh, here just i want to give a small hint uh, if you want to if any institute want to go for the uh, nac assessment uh, first step that uh, this is my personal uh, this is my again personal view for our professional or physical professional that you should go for at college level for triple a committee that is uh, academic administration academic audit try from there you call the team you try from there once you are very thorough with the administration and academic audit then you should go with the other criteria so this can be one of the steps to which will make you more easy to go for the final nac uh, 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 assessment and once you enroll your college for the nac assessment within 45 days you have to submit your all the document which is very tough so mm -hmm. again uh, advice is that please make all the document ready there should not be any fabricated document whatever is there that should be with you don't try to make any fabrication don't try to make any irrelevant what is there fact that you try to provide that is what i want to tell everyone don't do any uh, uh, mixture don't fabricate any certificates and all what is there that has to be project you and you see that what score you are going to get and try to get improvement because we are trying to get quality improvement we don't don't want to give uh, improvement in the fabrications and all this is what my uh, suggestion and advice to everyone and triple a committee is very important uh, if you go for the triple a committee then uh, you can go for the nac assessment that is what uh, i advise uh, to all the institute thank you thank so you so much for giving the opportunity thank you so much sir so as as you rightly said uh, keep your vision and take small small steps to achieve your uh, vision thank you once again on behalf of physio uh, physio tv and uh, i wish everybody a very wonderful day ahead thank you thank you sir